A vocoder is a signal processing algorithm that takes two sounds, a carrier and a modulator. It analyzes the spectrum of the modulator, which is usually someone's voice, and transplants that spectrum onto the carrier, which is usually some synthesized waveform. It's a popular choice for creating a robot voice effect and featured in songs by Kraftwerk, Daft Punk, Imogen Heap, Beastie Boys, and many others. It is surprisingly easy to build your own vocoder in Super Collider, so let's do it. For the modulator, I'm going to use this recording of my voice. It just completely broke my brain. I had no idea what I was hearing or that sounds like this could exist. So play buff takes care of that. Now for the carrier, the wider the spectrum, the better the results are going to be. So I'm going to pass white noise through a comb filter to create a resonator effect, which has a broad spectrum, but also a sense of pitch at the inverse of the delay time, which is 50 hertz by default. Comb filters can get pretty loud, especially with long decay times. So let's dial back the amplitude and take a listen. Next, we're going to pass the modulator through a bank of bandpass filters and measure the amplitude of each band. So BPF with mod as the input, and then an array of center frequencies. Our range of pitch sensation is about 10 octaves, and a lot of graphic EQs split the octave into three bands. So 10 times three is 30 filters. That seems like a pretty good model. A target range of 20 to 20,000 is fine, but you'll still get good results if you shrink this range a bit, which also feels a little safer to me, but I might just be paranoid. For reciprocal quality, I'm going to do 1 over Q, and then the square root of Q for mull, which I find does a pretty good job of keeping the overall amplitude consistent across a wide range of Q values. So if you're curious, we can listen to the filtered modulator using Splay to mix 30 channels down to stereo. It just completely broke my brain. I had no idea what I was hearing. So keep in mind, at the end of the day, it's the carrier we're going to be listening to, not the modulator. Uh, I'm just monitoring the modulator because I think it's kind of interesting. So uh, next, we're going to measure the output amplitude of each filter using amplitude.kr, and the output is 30 channels of real-time amplitude following, one for each band. Now, in addition to monitoring the filtered modulator, let's also route the amplitude tracking to a bank of control buses, and let's view those on the scope to see what we're working with. It just completely broke my brain. I had no idea what I was hearing or that sounds like this could exist. Okay, cool. We are actually almost done. The last thing is to apply this spectral profile to the carrier. So we pass the carrier through an identical set of filters, multiply by track, and output the result, again mixing down to stereo. So it works, uh, but there's a couple of things we can do to improve the results. The sound is kind of gritty and crunchy. That's because the amplitude tracking signal is jittery, uh, as is, but we can smooth it out by lagging with a small time interval. It also sounds a little quiet relative to the modulator, so I'm going to upscale these values a bit. And if we splay as is, the low frequency bands end up on the left and the high frequency on the right. It sounds kind of unbalanced, so we can scramble the array and set spread closer to zero, which narrows the stereo image. Freak is an argument, so it's controllable in real time. For example, let's give this synth a name and then prep a set message down below with some randomness. It's a pretty lazy example of controlling pitch, but you could plug in a MIDI controller and use that to modulate the frequency instead. And on that note, you could also hook up a microphone, use sound in instead of play buff, and you've got yourself a real-time robot voice auto-tuner. And don't forget, you can use whatever you want for the carrier. Just keep in mind that the wider the spectrum, the better the results tend to be. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, shout out and thanks to my patrons. Uh, thank you all so much for the support. I really appreciate it. I, I hope you have some fun with this vocoder. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. See you next time.